Carol Douglas was a paleontologist who worked for the Carnegie Museum. Got a directive from the Carnegie Museum to come check out some reports of dinosaur bones. In August of 1909, he walked up to the top of a hill, and there was a spectacular set of dinosaur tailbones out in bas relief in the rock and just plunging down into the ground. And when he started digging, I'm sure he had no idea the size, the immense size, and the abundance of dinosaurs that this quarry would turn out to produce. If we look at the shipping records for just the Carnegie Museum, they actually shipped about 700,000 pounds of fossils from here back to Pittsburgh. That doesn't count the amount of rock that was removed to get to the fossils. That's the fossils that were jacketed and crated up, loaded on buckboard, and then taken to the railroad system. And that's the remains of somewhere around 410 individual dinosaurs. Not complete skeletons, but parts of that many individuals. The reason there's such a large deposit of dinosaur bones here in the quarry has to do with the environment in the late Jurassic Morrison Formation. There's evidence that there was a severe multi-year drought that dried up this river system, killed all the clams and things that lived in the water, killed a lot of dinosaurs, and so we had dinosaurs dead out on the floodplains or in and along the dry river channels. And then when the wet season finally returned and floodwaters came down, those floodwaters picked up dried carcasses off the floodplains in and around the edges of the river and just floated them all down and concentrated them on the bottom of the river channel. I hope that the government, for the benefit of science and the people, will uncover a large area, leave the bones and skeletons in relief, and house them. It would make one of the most astounding and instructive sites imaginable. Written by Earl Douglas to Dr. Walcott, Secretary of the Smithsonian Institute, 1923. Instead of taking bones to museums, we now brought the museum to the bones. We know about at least 400 fossil sites in the park. That includes invertebrate sites and plant sites. They're not all dinosaur. DNM 16 is a very important dinosaur quarry in the monument. It has produced uh, multiple specimens of a new sauropod dinosaur called Abetosaurus macintoshi, which was the first sauropod dinosaur discovered with a complete skull from the last 80 million years of the age of dinosaurs in the Western Hemisphere. So yeah, usually the last thing you find is the skull if you find it at all. In this case, we found, it, found multiple skulls at the very beginning. It's ironic that DNM 16, which produced not one, but three and a half of these skulls, which is absolutely unheard of almost um, for any sauropod dinosaur, 
was maybe just barely or maybe not even exposed at all when Earl Douglas was working here. And while that quarry is not as large and significant as the Carnegie Quarry is, DNM 16 has still produced one of the most famous of all sauropod dinosaurs, simply by virtue of having so many skulls preserved. The excavation at DNM 16 is similar in some ways to the Carnegie Quarry excavations. The beds tilt at the same direction that these do, about 60 degrees to the south. So the further we followed the sandstone layer down, the more overburden we had to take off to follow that, just as they did here. The digging process is a little faster nowadays because uh, we now use various kinds of pneumatic tools than uh, just completely hand tools as they use here. But nevertheless, once you get the bone exposed, you have to jack it in a burlap and plaster, uh, make sure it's mapped, and then get it off and carry it down the hill. Dinosaur has one of the most spectacular uh, fossil records from the age of dinosaurs of any Park Service unit.